second grade. Coming at you today with Greek myths. You already learned a ton about ancient Greek history, but in this domain, we're going to learn all about Greek myths. That's right. Hercules is a myth. Uh, we got the myth of Icarus, Theseus, and the Minotaur, and that's what you see right here up front. You see Theseus, who's a mighty prince, <clears throat> battling a Minotaur. A Minotaur is a half-man, half-bull, crazy creature that is in one of our stories. So, Greek myths, and here's your vocabulary for this lesson. <clears throat> Excuse me. Your first word is glimpse. A glimpse is a brief or quick look. For example, Jan snuck into the kitchen before the party to get a glimpse of her birthday cake. The next word is sanctuary. Sanctuary is a holy place, a safe, protected place. For example, the voices in the choir filled the sanctuary. Your next word is spectators. Spectators observe are observers. They're people watching an event. For example, spectators come from distant cities to watch the Olympics. I would pay especially close attention to that word spectators in this lesson because you're going to write about it after you're done. <clears throat> Next one is securely. Securely means something to be t that's tightened firmly. An example is Kayo and her mother attached their bikes securely to the back of the car. You don't want those bikes to fall off. You want to make sure they're nice and secure. And then lastly, tending. That's not trending, kids. It's tending. Tending means taking care of something and um, or someone. On Saturday mornings, Carl could always be found outside tending to his garden. All right, so another thing I noticed is that we have the, the V's and the ADV's and the N's now on these words. That means that this word, tending, is a verb. It's an action word. Securely is an adjective. That's a word that describes a noun. And spectators uh, is a noun. Sanctuary is a noun. And glimpse is a noun. So those are all your words for the story. <clears throat> you can take a look at the picture, the cover photo for these stories. And the cover photo... Greek myths, tell again, flip book. You can see all these different stories. There's pieces of all these stories. There's somebody getting dragged down into the underworld. There's a man holding up the world. There is um, the Minotaur thesis in the Minotaur. There's a man wrestling a bear. That's Hercules. There's Poseidon in the ocean. There's this dude flying. Um, and then there's the gods on Mount Olympus, all these stories that are in our, there's um, Artemis, the Huntress, there's all these stories that are in our, in our lesson today, or in our lessons in this domain. All right, so I'm going to put myself right over here, and we will zoom to our first lesson. <clears throat> Grab my storybook here. I'm so excited to see why this this kid is called Leonidas. His name is Leonidas. So Leonidas woke up early on the day of the foot races. Still lying in bed, he could hear his father, Cyrus, outside. Oops, sorry. Sorry, guys. Lost my book. There we go. Leonidas woke up early on the day of the foot races. Still lying in bed, he could hear his father, Cyrus, outside, tending to the horses. He's probably feeding them, Leonidas thought to himself. And then we'll harness them to the cart and make our way to Olympia. Olympia was the site of this day's foot races in honor of Zeus, the leader of all of the Greek gods and goddesses. Leonidas and his father would take the pottery to sell at, to the people at the races. <clears throat> when they had sold all that they could, they would watch the races. Leonidas knew that if he asked his father, if he asked, his father would tell him again how the gods and goddesses came to be and why he and the other Greeks honored them with races, festivals, and feasts. In it was his favorite story, and he loved to hear his father tell it. But first, Leonidas had to get out of bed and get dressed. 
Otherwise, he wouldn't get to hear the story or see the races at all. After breakfast, he went outside to help his father, Cyrus, who had just finished harnessing all of the horses in to their cart. Good morning, father, Leonidas said. Good morning, son. We're almost ready to go. Will you help me harness the last horse? Leonidas nodded, and together, as the sun burnt away, the morning fog, father and son harnessed the second horse. Once they double-checked that the horses were securely fastened to the cart, Leonidas and Cyrus finished storing their pottery safely in the cart. Then, taking their seats on a wooden plank at the front of the cart, they started their journey to Olympia. After they traveled some miles down the road, Leonidas asked his father, Father, will you tell me again the story of the gods and goddesses? Of course, son. As you know, we're going to Olympia, to the foot races held in honor of Zeus. Olympia is home in, in an important sanctuary devoted to Zeus, where we celebrate him and the other Olympian gods and goddesses with sporting competitions. The twelve gods of Mount Olympus are the most powerful of all of the many gods, and Zeus is their leader. Of course, Mount Olympus is actually far away, but this is a beautiful valley, beloved to them and, the, and perfect for the games. Their cart went over a bump, and Cyrus turned around to check their wares briefly before continuing the story. These gods and goddesses can sometimes be just like you and me. They can feel happy or sad, jealous and angry, or generous and loving. Unlike you and me, they have special powers and control things like the seasons and the weather. And when they were there at war, and sometimes when with whom we fall in love. And unlike you and me, the gods are immortal. That means that they never die. Cyrus paused before continuing on with Leonidas's part, favorite part of the story. That's how the gods are from are different from mortals on earth. But do you know how to tell them apart from one another? Leonidas did know, but he always wanted his father to continue telling him the story. So he said, "Yes, father, but tell me anyway." Cyrus continued saying, "Well, as I said before, Zeus is the leader of all the gods, and he protects all of us here on earth. He has a voice like rolling thunder and controls the wind, rain, and lightning, which he also uses as weapons. He has two brothers, Hades and Poseidon, and together they rule over the whole world. While Zeus controls the heavens, Poseidon controls the sea and rules over it with a trident. When he strikes the ground and with his trident, the earth shakes, and when he strikes the seas with it, the waves rise up as tall as the mountains. And Zeus and Poseidon are two of the twelve gods who live on Mount Olympus and have thrones there. Leonidas and his father came to a fork in the road and turned left. They could now see other carts ahead of them in the distance, other vendors looking to sell their wares at the foot races in Olympia. And what about Hades, Zeus's other brother? Well, Le Leonidas asked. Well, Zeus rules over the heavens, Poseidon rules over the sea, and Hades rules the underworld, or the land of the dead. Hades has a helmet that makes him invisible, so that no one, friend or foe, can see him coming. Hades' throne is in the underworld, where he lives, Cyrus said. He sounds scary, Leonidas shivered. Who else lives on Mount Olympus? Well, Cyrus said, Zeus has a sister who has a throne on Mount Olympus. Demeter is the goddess of the harvest and grain. 
She looks after all of the fields and crops on earth. Zeus's wife, Hera, also lives on Mount Olympus. She's the queen of the gods and the god and goddesses, and is the goddess of women's lives. Women's lives. Hmm. How many? How many is that? Cyrus turned and asked his son. Counting on his fingers, Leonidas said, "Zeus, Poseidon, Demeter, Hera, just four. Who are the other gods and goddesses who live on Mount Olympus?" And here's the picture of Demeter. Oh, Hera. Demeter and Hera. Well, there's Hephaestus, the god of fire, and the blacksmith of the gods, Aphrodite, the goddess of love, Athena, goddess of wisdom, and Ares, the god of war. Then there are the twins, Apollo, god of light and music, and his sister Artemis, the goddess of the hunt. There's Hermes, the messenger of the gods, and finally Dionysus, the god of wine, and the youngest of all of the gods. Even though these are the most powerful of the gods and goddesses, Zeus is the strongest of all, and with he, and it is he whom we honor today. Cyrus stopped the cart. They had finally reached Olympia. Spectators and vendors moved from all around as athletes stretched in participation for the races. Leonidas knew Leonidas knew that many miles away he could the cloud covered mount was the cloud covered Mount Olympus. As the midday sun shone through the clouds, Leonidas imagined he could see the briefest glimpse of a palace and twelve golden thrones. Right. That's it for today. Until next time. Thank you guys.